Reproductive System in Plants, Science 5, Week 5, Quarter 2. Like animals, plants are also capable of reproduction. They reproduce in many ways. In general, plants exhibit both sexual and asexual reproduction. New plants can be produced through seeds and different parts, like stem, leaves, roots, and etc. These are the reasons why you can see plants anywhere, especially in the forest where they get good physical condition. This lesson is intended for you to describe the plant reproductive system responsible for the process, specifically sexual reproduction. The different activities that you will encounter in this lesson will lead you to understand how different parts of the plant's functions in producing their own kind. Plants have many ways on how to reproduce. Some of their parts are used to produce their own kind. Do you know of any plants in your community that grows another new young plant through their leaves or stalk? Let us answer learning task number one. Study the pictures, name the plant, identify the parts of the plants used for reproduction. Look at picture one, plant name, and parts used for reproduction. Picture number two, plant name, plant used for reproduction. And picture number three, plant name, part used for reproduction. And these are the correct answers. Number one, pechay, seed. Number two, taro, roots. Number three, sweet potato, roots. Look at the picture in our screen. Do you know the name of that plant or tree? Right, that is a malungay o a mawinga tree. Malungay or horseradish is a common plant found anywhere in the community. It has a lot of health benefits. Based on different studies, its parts are used for medicinal purposes. Which part of the malungay plant is used to reproduce its kind? What part of plant seeds are developed? And these are the correct answers. Malungay used stem and seeds to reproduce, and the seeds develop from the flower. Flower is an, is an accessory organ of the plants used in sexual reproduction. Flowers can be classified as complete and incomplete. A flower is said to be complete when it has both male and female reproductive parts. On the other hand, it is incomplete when it has only one reproductive part, either male or female. Most plants important to agriculture like corn, rice, wheat, and soybeans are flowering, which means that they undergo sexual reproduction. Now, look at your surrounding. What do you think are the plants that shows sexual reproduction? Look at our screen. What is the name of that plant or flower? Right, that is a gumamela. Look at the different parts of a gumamela. We have... We have the carpal, stigma, style, and ovary. We have also stamen, pollen, and filament. And we have ovules or the eggs of the flower. Let us look at the real gumamela flower and its parts. Flowers are parts that indicate a plant is producing seeds. When seeds are produced, it means that the plant performs sexual reproduction. Different parts of the flower are involved to do such process. Pentacle, also called a pedicle, is the stalk of the flower that is important to hold the fruit. 
Receptacle is the thickened stem part attached to the pedicle and it is where the flower of or group of flowers grows. We have the sepals or pronounced as sepals and closes and protects the upper parts of the flower, especially when the flower is still a bud. Sepals are considered modified leaves, which means they have special function. A flower has also a collection of sepal called calyx. For our second learning task, all plants that bear flowers are called flowering plants. Flowers are useful in the process of fertilization among plants. Below is a figure showing the parts of a flower involved in fertilization. Study the figure and label the parts of a flower. Copy this in your notebook. Figure parts of a flower. And these are the correct answers. We have anther, filament, stigma, style, ovary, ovule, petal, sepal, and we have the pedicle and receptacle. To perform sexual reproduction, a flower has stamen and pistil that serve as male and female reproductive organ respectively. Stamen, or male organ, is composed of filament and the anther. The filament is hair-like structure that holds the anther, bringing the pollen grains to the position where it can be released effectively. The anther has two major roles, with pollen, with pollen sacs that carries all the pollen. Pollen grains are released by the anther when they are already matured. On the other hand, pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower. It is consists of several parts such as style and stigma. The style is an elongated part of the flower that supports and connects the stigma to the ovary. It extends to the height where the stigma can collect and trap pollen grains. The stigma the one that receives the pollen grains is a stick and swallow structure that the tip of the style. The fluids that is secreted by the stigma enabling the pollen grains to mature continuously until their germinates. If both pistil and semen are present, the flower is considered complete or bisexual like rose and gramella. On the other hand, a flower with either stamen or pistil is considered as incomplete or unisexual. Plants like papaya and cucumber produce only unisexual flowers. Sexual reproduction among plants happens through the transfer of pollen grains from the anther into the stigma. The anther serves as the male part while the stigma functions as the female part. This process is called pollination. There are two types of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. For learning test 3, compare and contrast the two types of pollination and use the illustration to answer the questions found in the boxes. Look at picture of the self-pollination. We have 1, 2, and 3. In what part of the flower are pollen grains located? In what part of the flower pollen grains are transferred during pollination? How many plants are involved in the process? And these are the correct answers. We have enter, stigma, and one. For cross-pollination, we have two flowers. Look at number one, two, then three. In what part of the flower are pollen grains located? In what part of the flower pollen grains are transferred during pollination? And how many flowers are involved in the process? And these are the correct answers. We have anther, stigma, and two plants. For number three, self-pollination is blank while cross-pollination is blank. 
The transfer of pollen grains from flower A to B is called length, and the transfer of pollen grains from flower B to flower C is called length. And these are the correct answers. Self-pollination happens when the pollen grain are transferred from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower in the same plant, while cross-pollination is a process that requires, requires two individual plants of the same species. The transfer of pollen grains from flower A to B is called self-pollination, while the transfer of pollen grains from flower B to flower C is called cross pollination. Let us take a look again at the pictures of self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination happens when the pollen grain are transferred from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower in the same plant. Cross-pollination is a process that requires two individual plants of the same species. Self-pollination and cross-pollination are examples of pollen grain transfer through insects. When pollination is caused by wind and another and other non-living factors, it is called abiotic pollination. Fertilization occurs when swelling tube-like pollen grains goes into the stigma through the stud to reach the ovary. The process is completed at the moment the sperm is released from the tube to fertilize the egg cell in the ovule. Fertilized ovules get matured to develop into seeds. On the other hand, the ovary enlarges and develops to become the fruit. Ripening of fruit signals that the seeds are already prepared to be planted and produce new plants. Sexual reproduction through pollination is possible with the help of pollinators. Pollinators are agents for the transfer of pollen grains from a flower to another flower or either same plant or different plants of the same species. For our learning task 4, name three plants and identify the pollinators by completing the chart below. Illustrate how pollination takes place in each flower and draw this in your notebook. We have agent of pollination or pollinators and the drawing. And this is an example of an answer to that learning task. Agent of pollination or pollinators, insect, water, and wind. And that ends our lesson about the plant reproduction. Thank you for joining today's class. Happy learning! Bye-bye! <laughs>